Hello, I'm Maria Nadestad, and today I'd like to talk to you about my tools I've made for analyzing and visualizing long reads, assemblies, and complex variation. I'm going to discuss three different tools that I've made, Assemblytic, Split Threader, and Ribbon. But I'm going to spend a lot of time on Ribbon towards the end, so I first want to introduce Assemblytics and Split Threader. Assemblytics is a web analytics tool for detecting variants from an assembly. When you have an assembly that you've created using any kind of software, such as Falcon, if you're using PacBio reads, then you can align that to a reference genome using Mummer, which is a genome genome or assembly to genome aligner. And then you can take the output of Mummer and upload that to Assemblytics. Assemblytics will then do some unique anchor filtering and variant calling, and then it'll also give you some statistics about the variations and about the assembly as a whole. And it even gives you an interactive dot plot, which allows you to look at how each contig from your assembly is aligning to the reference genome. And you can even zoom in to look at the specifics and repetitive elements here are shown in red, which are the ones that are filtered out by the unique anchor filtering and would not be used for structural variant calling. The second app I have is Split Threader, which is for visualization and analysis of long range variants and copy number. This is especially useful for cancer genomes where you have a lot of changes in copy number as well as uh, many long range rearrangements and it's all very overlapping and complicated. For Split Threader, what you'll have is copy number calls that you can actually get. And if you look at the website, it'll tell you how to generate those using a script that I have made which is on GitHub, and you also input variants, which you can call from any variant calling tool. And you put those two things together, you upload them both to Split Threader, and it allows you to visualize how the copy number variants and the long range variants that you've uh, called actually line up with each other and how they agree on different uh, variations that are shown. So as an example, here are some different variants and how their signatures look in Split Threader. So first in pink here, we have a deletion where you can see there's a dip in copy number. And then the, the connection shown underneath is showing you where the reads are aligning on either side. And then they kind of continue. And so where the reads are split from one side of the deletion to the other. Uh, below that, we have an inversion where the reads are split both on the same side. So they go up to that point and they essentially stop and double back on themselves. Tandem duplication, on the other hand, the reads are pointing towards each other and you get this rise in copy number in between. Then we also have translocations where you'll have a dip in copy number on one side and then a rise in copy number on the other side as the reads continue and they skip from one location to the other taking the copy number with them. And then we have these complex overlapping events, which we have no hope of really assigning a type to because they're all overlapping each other so much. And we can call the individual events uh, novel adjacencies, which I tend to go with, but we can think of the whole mess as just a set of overlapping events in a complex ginormous variant. And so that's a split threader. So that's available at splitthreader.com. Now for the third app, Ribbon, uh, this is what I've been working on here in the summer of 2016. And this was really created in order to visualize the read evidence behind all of the complex structural variants that I found using Split Threader and that we found in this cancer genome we've been analyzing, which is called SKBR3. So Ribbon is made for visualizing complex genome alignments and structural variations. In Ribbon, you can input alignments of either SAM or BAM format or the ones you get from Mummer, where you can create coordinates that match those that you get out of Mummer. And that's a very flexible format, so you can essentially make that format out of any alignment format that you have. So you have to upload alignments in order to see anything, but you can also add variants, and now you can even add other features like genes, or if you have a repeat mask or database or something like that that you want to visualize alongside your alignments, then you can now do that. And there's a lot of different things to look at here, so I'm going to go into more detail on it. So first, at the top, we have the multi-read view, where it shows you all of the reads that are mapping. And here we've queried a particular region where a variant occurs. So 
Then the uh, single read view is at the very bottom where you can see how a single read align, and I'll go into details on these. So in the multi-read view at the top, we have reference chromosomes shown at the very top, and we have the parts of the reference that have alignments in this particular region. We take all of the reads that, have, that are in this region and look at all their alignments, not just in this region, but everywhere in the genome. And so that's why you see these other chromosomes as well. And you see all the places that those other parts of the read are gonna align as well. So the alignments are shown forward direction in blue, and then red is the reverse direction. So that's the reverse complement. And so that shows you how when you have inversions and things like that, you get the reads actually aligning in opposite directions. We're also looking at variants. Those are shown at the very bottom here as these connections. And you'll recognize those as being very similar to what we just saw in the split threader. And so that's why I showed you these different variant types so you can see how the reads are gonna point in one direction or the other depending on the variant type. And that's very consistent here. So these two black lines going from top to bottom are where we queried the BAM file from. And so that's why we see a bunch of reads that are right at those locations, but you don't see that many reads everywhere else. And so that's because we query the BAM file at these two particular locations. And then those are all the reads that we're gonna see, and then we see all of their other alignments as well. In the single read view, we also see the reference chromosomes. And in this case, it actually matches up perfectly with the top region so that you keep that context of what you're looking at in the multi-read view when you look at individual reads. So in order to see a different read on the bottom view, you click a read in the top view to select it, and then that shows up at the bottom so you can see more details about it. And then we also have here the parts of the reference that have alignments for that read or for any of your reads. And at the very bottom, the black bar is showing where the read is that you have, or not where it is, but it's showing the read itself. And here we can see that the read is a little over 10 KB in size. And this read is from PEGBIO sequencing. And then we see the alignment. So you can see how the alignments are lining up with the reference. In this case, we have a forward pointing or a forward direction alignment and we have one that's in reverse. And for the reverse one, the lines are crossing. And so that's how you can tell that it's flipped around. And that's the same thing that we see up in the multi-read view. You have some in red that are reverse and some in blue that are forward. So that's one of the reads that I've selected. Now let's look at a couple of examples of different variants that we can see using ribbon and how they're gonna look. So here's two deletions. One of them is homozygous and the other is heterozygous. So you can see how there are some reads that just get split completely on the homozygous side, and that's all of them. And on the heterozygous side, you get about half the reads that are split over that deletion and half of them that just kind of continue straight through as if the variant is not there because it's not there on the other homolog. And on the single read views at the bottom, um, we've selected one of the reads that's actually deleted or that shows the deletion. And so that's present there. And this one is kind of interesting. It shows a region where there's one particular sequence in that orange chromosome nine that is inserted into three different places in the genome. One into chromosome one on the bottom left, into chromosome two on the bottom right, and then into chromosome 12 on the top right. And then on the top left, you see the multi-read view where you can see little traces of these in all those different locations. And so this gives us a chance to really easily see where different uh, variants have happened and you quickly get a sense for all the different places that the reads are aligning and in what way they align. So all you have to do in order to figure this out is to click around and look at different alignments and see if there's an alignment to this other chromosome, do I see an interesting pattern here? This one shows a comparison between a translocation and an insertion. And so the insertion is uh, one of the ones we were just looking at before, the one that goes into chromosome one. And you can see that for the translocation, the original sequence has actually moved and for an insertion, the original sequence is still there. So the very top one is the multi-read view. And then the middle panel here is showing the 
the sequence that's actually where the insertion takes place. And then the bottom is showing the original sequence where on the translocation side you can see it's been deleted and on the insertion side there's no trace of a deletion there. Uh, it's completely intact. Another completely different thing that you can use Riven for is actually to look at those same kinds of alignments that you would get out of Mummer. Uh, in this case, it's a gorilla assembly aligned against a human reference. So it's not really about necessarily variation anymore. You can actually use assembly alignments or different species aligned against each other. And this one is showing, yeah, the gorilla assembly against a human reference. And we're looking at, in the single read view, one contig from the gorilla assembly that actually splits into two different places on the human reference on chromosomes 6 and 10. So that's another example. Um, this one is actually comparing the two reference genomes, HG19 against GRCH38. And so at the moment, those are the two newest reference genomes, GRCH38 being the newest one. And so here we've taken HG19 as the query, as the read or the assembly, and, H and the GRCH38 is then the reference genome in this case. And so you can even see here the pseudo-autosomal region where you get a piece of chromosome X that actually matches very nicely to a piece of chromosome Y. So we can see traces of these kinds of things on the whole genome scale. And you do the, all this and the gorilla assembly as well by loading in coordinates from Mummer after running show coords, which is the command that gives you coordinates. And then you just upload those to Riven and you can see everything. Uh, this is a super simple variant. It's actually just a tiny deletion that's captured within one PacBio read. And so you just see that gap between the reads. You can see the variant shown as a blue box here. And you can see the variant in the multi-read view as just these little thinner lines where the, the alignments are going over them. But you can see the indel in the cigar string, actually. And so that's what we're showing here in the single read view as well. This one is a really cool variant that I found in that cancer genome that we've been working on from the beginning in my project and in my lab. And this is showing one of my favorite gene fusions from this cancer genome that's actually a two-hop gene fusion. So in this case, the gene fusion goes from the Sith-1 gene. It does, a, it does one hop over into a slight part or a small part of the MTBP gene and then it skips from there over into the EIF3H gene. So there's two variants necessary to bring the two genes together, Sith1 and EIF3H. And this is a gene fusion that we have seen in previous literature that was present in RNA-seq studies. And we actually found this from our own ISIS-seq uh, analysis as well. And there was no real direct link between those two genes in the DNA. But by looking at the alignments in this way and using split threader to look for uh, paths between the two genes, we found that there's this beautiful set of two hops that actually brings the two genes right next to each other. And in the single read view, you can see one of those reads that's actually capturing the entire, all three genes, the entire two hop fusion within a single read. And so that's the power of long reads. Sometimes you actually get to capture these complex variations within a single read, giving you very strong evidence that they are, in fact, um, in one piece. So now I'd like to show you a small demo of how to use Riven. And here we're going to put in a BAM file, and then we're going to use a bedpe file, which is a set of variants, to query the BAM file and look at uh, what a variant looks like and what reads are supporting it. So first, this is what it looks like when you first get in there. And you have a little box that allows you to upload all sorts of different data. And we're going to say we're going to load a BAM file. So I've selected a BAM file from the computer. And you just need to have a BAM and a .bai file, which is the index for the BAM file. And that allows us to actually read the BAM file straight from your computer. So it can be a really large file. And that's OK. And it'll still read it into the web application. Um, without having to read in the entire file. I've done this with BAM files that are actually over 300 gigabytes. It takes a little while sometimes to read in the index file in that case, but it is totally possible without uploading the BAM file itself. 
So now that we have the BAM file read in, it actually reads the header and you can see it's already populated the reference chromosomes at the very top. So we can see that we have a BAM file and what reference chromosomes we have there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and say upload BEDPE and we're gonna select a BEDPE file. And now we can see that a small table has shown up here at the bottom. And this is a table that shows you all of the variants in that BEDPE file so that you can select the ones that you're interested in. So I'm just gonna collapse the information tab here and all the tabs on the right panel are collapsible because that really enables you to see a lot more and um, to play with all the views. So in this table, you can do a lot of cool things. You can type in filters. So here I typed in equals TRA, and that gives me only all of the variants that in that column say TRA. I can also sort by chromosomes and by positions and by size, anything I'm interested in. I can click on a row in the table in order to query from the BAM file. So now we can select reads. And so here I've clicked on one of the reads and this is the one you'll recognize as one of our insertions from before. And I've selected a read that shows the insertion where you can see that this little piece from chromosome nine has actually been inserted into chromosome one. And then we're gonna collapse the region view here. And then I'm gonna just show you what it looks like when you do a dot plot. So you can switch between a ribbon plot and a dot plot here. And the dot plot is just a different way of looking at things. It's often useful when you have really complicated variants or a lot of repetitive elements, or if you're looking at an assembly and you're more used to looking at dot plots because that's kind of the standard in that field of genome genome comparisons. So the dot plot is also available there for you. And it shows the exact same information. It just shows the alignments from the BAM file. It doesn't try to reanalyze the sequence or anything like that. We also have available as some extra features here in Ribbon that you can do permalinks, cookies, and screenshots. And so you can save screenshots by clicking on these buttons and it'll save a, a high quality screenshot of either the top view or the bottom view, whatever you choose. You can also create a permalink. You type in a little name for it. You click the create permalink button and then this generates a permalink for you with a URL that you can share on with your colleagues and things like that. You can put it on Twitter, whatever you want to do. And then people can actually go to that same URL and they'll see the same data that you have within view. And they can actually play with the data. They can slide the sliders and play with the filters and they can select different reads and see what's going on in that region that you wanted to show them. All the permalinks you've created end up as cookies. They get saved to your computer as cookies. And so they're going to end up in the My Data tab so you can remember what you've shared with other people. And that's where the title comes in handy too because that's what's gonna show up in that navigation bar. This is a permalink right here at the bottom. So you, if you type that into your computer and go to it, you'll actually see this exact data and you can play with it exactly like it is on here. Okay, so on this, this is a, um, this last slide is a summary of each of the applications. So we have assemblytics.com, which is very useful if you're doing a genome assembly project or comparing different species to each other. This has actually been published already in the journal Bioinformatics and the preprint is on the bioarchive. Splitthreader.com, also available right now, is really useful, especially if you're doing complex cancer genomics and you have a particularly bad genome. And then uh, genomeribbon.com, which is ribbon, is it, that genome browser that I just spent a long time showing you. And it's essentially useful for a lot of things, including complex variation. It's especially powerful for looking at long reads where different parts of the read can be mapping to vastly different places and you can contain a complex variant within a single read. And Ribbon is sponsored by Pacific Biosciences. And then I would like to acknowledge Mike Schatz, my PhD advisor, Fritz, who is my colleague in the Schatz lab and then Jason Chin and Aaron Winger from PacBio who have been helpful in Ribbon. And uh, that's it.